So we're kind of pulling things together here. Strengths and weaknesses of mobile. Small size screen is a weakness, a challenge. <laughs> okay, almost like an outdoor ad, out of home ad. You've just got that space and no video, and it's a. So how can you involve someone in the ad? With mobile, you've got this tiny space. Okay, and how can you? It's the same thing. How can you involve someone? in the ad different challenge really but, but kind of in a way the same challenge intrusion on personal space uh, avoiding is easy with mobile ads you've still got bots and fraud happening with mobile ads in fact more and more since more and more dollars are going there that's where the crooks will go um, measurement Okay, through the IAB's definition of especially impressions it's a problem and kind of a minor thing I guess really in the overall picture of everything is color reproduction um, you know electronic screens can't be perfect strengths it's always with you and looked at the mechanism to search and buy now it's space time related it can tie in with brick and mortar um, And can we think of anything else? <laughs> That's all I could think of right now. Sorry. Um, let's see if I can just move this ahead here. There we go. So, um, what have we talked about with mobile? Uh, well, we've covered a fair amount, uh, I think. I hope you agree. Um, the history and background of mobile devices, um, at least in terms of... Uh, particularly after we go to smartphones, the penetration of smartphones, uh, major players, Samsung and, uh, and uh, Apple, in terms of devices, uh, the fact that Facebook and Google dominate in terms of ad spend in most of the world, uh, definitely in the U.S., but Amazon is starting to come up. Uh, we looked at lots of types. We looked at uh, banners, made the point that in the first advertising, uh, uh, other than in real early SMS text uh, marketing stuff, people just took their banner from the desktop and sized it for mobile. And now, you know, so much more has been done with standardized banner sizes and where do the banners show up and... Uh, Rich media, uh, we looked at that. We looked at quite a lot of video since so much of the growth and everything is in video. We looked at interstitial and uh, video that's in stream and out stream. Uh, we looked at uh, different size video screens. We talked about video impression. Um, and so we did a lot with video. Uh, we did also talk about a little bit about email. We talked I think quite a bit about SMS, uh, the growth area, and uh, how we expect there to be more and more of that since that's an uncluttered mailbox so far, but that it's very permission-based, um, considered a very personal space for advertisers to step into. Uh, we talked about programmatic and other things going on with internet advertising overall are certainly going on with mobile as well. That includes the fraud and bots and... Uh, uh, etc. And um, then we define the uh, impression. I think is it's overall a strong impression, but it's very limited by the size and by people's desire to avoid it. Um, okay, so now conclusion and final thoughts. We're back to our happy campers here, uh, and uh, we're remembering the analogy that. Uh, Mobile keeps you always connected to the internet, where pretty much wherever you go, as long as you've got a network you can get on. Um, so, final thoughts for all of this. Uh, remember, we talked about in the inter in the internet presentation before we got into mobile specifically. We talked about some of the issues facing all of 
this, that there'll be an internet of things soon. There already is some degree with, uh, um, Alexis and, uh, uh, door cameras and different things operating our houses. Uh, we talked about the monopolies and the duopolies, uh, suppressing competition and maybe raising prices. Um, and maybe giving rise, rise to some antitrust activity by the government at some point. Um, virtual reality. Um, people are peeking at that around the corner, I'd say, is something to be moving towards. The big privacy issues we see um, with uh, regular Internet advertising, but with mobile you have this added dimension of the geo capabilities, the GPS targeting that it can track your location which can reveal some very private information you don't want people to know or they don't have the right to know. We talked about telemarketing um, um, with the mobile, and uh, we also talked about bad content, the fact that with the Internet, whether it's on a mobile device or any kind of device, uh, with particularly the social networks, that there is very little control or editing over the content, and there are malicious actors that can do very bad things and harmful things. Some of the issues. We talked about 5G in this uh, lecture as being around the corner for mobile and for driverless cars and uh, etc. Uh, we also talked about the fact that uh, when we look at the country, our country as a whole, that uh, there are parts of the country that do not have broadband access equal to other parts. And that this is one of the things that the coronavirus has turned up the knob on, uh, particularly uh, underlined by uh, online education. Um, and the fact that the number of students in uh, parts of the country or neighborhoods don't have the computers or don't have the access um, and that it's not right and that um, something needs to be done about that. All these issues with the internet. And uh, I'm not going to reread this, but uh, remember this was in the last presentation kind of summarizing, uh, in my words, um, kind of pulling things together. Almost every aspect of modern society is hooked up to the internet. All modern life, almost without exception, is intertwined with and dependent on the internet. And so it, one uh, kind of negative thought is, um, you know, as we looked at, look at conflict with other nations, and we certainly have seen some malevolent actors, Russia being a primary uh, example of uh, getting on our internet with content that they shouldn't be getting on with and hacking people's databases and trying to hack into election tallies, all because it's linked up and all because it's on the internet. Um, it's electronic. The databases are electronic. Opens things up. The fact that our power grid is run by computers on the internet means that the power grid can be interrupted. Uh, that would have a big effect on our society. Uh, you know, so when you talk about, you know, sending bombers over or something to, you know, start a warfare, there could be ways to create just as much or more damage without having to resort to that. And I think about, you know, if, uh, if, uh, crazy things happen, by the way, uh, there was a recent article in the New York times, of course, about a Russian sub um, having an accident uh, very deep in the ocean. This is a submarine that the Russians have designed. I don't think the Amer America has built any of these yet. It has special engineering properties so that it can go right down to the bottom of the ocean, which is, you know, in some cases, five, six, seven miles deep. And the speculation is why they wanting to go down there. <laughs> And they're being very quiet about it. And uh, the speculation is that they might be interested in cutting undersea cables. Um, 
just think about cutting internet cables. Of course, a lot of it's satellite based too, but then again, there are a lot of communication is going by cables, you know, as well. Um, so, you know, cables can be cut, networks can be smashed, and gee, what would happen to our world, which is so dependent on the internet now? Goodness. Maybe we'd all go back to living like this. You guys know what this is. If you're from Pennsylvania, particularly, you know, Ohio, uh, this is an Amish carriage. The Amish are a very interesting group of people, I think. I admire them in many ways. They're very successful. They work as a team, a whole community. It's not each man or woman for him or herself. And um, they don't have a lot of electricity uh, in their lives, but they do make some limited use of the Internet. Let's just take a look here. So we all go back to... <laughs> life without the internet, maybe without electricity too, right off the grid. Uh, this is Washington Post. I bet you they're going to block me from seeing this because I stopped my subscription. Um, smartphone addiction. Spend less time on their laptops. Social media. All right, please don't bother me now, people. Um, it's divided us, right? Percentage of Americans view technology as having a positive impact is 50%. This is before coronavirus. So the humane technology movement. There is another group that do not go on Google or Facebook or Apple that has been practicing humane technology for generations. That's the Amish. Okay. Each church community of about 30 families in a denomination with over 300,000 members has latitude in setting its technology boundaries. Interesting. When a church member asks to use a new technology, the families discuss the idea and vote to accept or reject. The conversation centers on how a device will strengthen or weaken relationships within the community and within families. Imagine if the U.S. here has, as I'm reading, had conducted a similar discussion when social media platforms were developing algorithms designed to amplify differences and then pit us against one another because anger drives traffic and traffic drives profits. Okay, church in Michigan wanted to purchase a hay baler that would be more efficient and would enable them to work alone. Members decided it might increase productivity, but how would community connections be affected if you began haying without the help of others? So he didn't, he wasn't allowed to get the hay baler. <laughs> Family wanted to run propane gas for lights to every room at their home instead of running them only to the kitchen and the living room. The Amish choose not to tap the electrical grid. Church members discussed how the change would affect the family. Family members could separate into bedrooms to read at night instead of gathering in the living room with their lives fray. Of course they would. And here's this author says, uh, thought of a woman at my children's school said so the disintegration of her family began the day her husband bought a TV for every kid's bedroom. That was a while back. Millions of parents are putting TVs in the children's bedrooms in the form of smartphones and laptops. An uneasiness about weakening family ties is widespread. Amish technology in the workplace now because they, they expand beyond farming to make a living. They make furniture and cabins and all kinds of things. Um, but they're using um, a robot to make, to help them manufacture. Engineers use three-dimensional computer-aided design to device products. Generated power by natural gas provides electricity. And this is for their plant, which is not connected to the electrical grid. At the day's end, the workers ride home on bicycles. High and low-tech success, we live side by side because the focus stays on human connections. Okay, for the Amish, social media um, consists of paying visits in real life to other members of the community. It's the main form of entertainment. People drop in on one another to chat for an evening, have potluck dinners. <laughs> okay, and Americans will never abandon technology for horse and buggy life. But we need to strike a balance. Uh, so, anyway, so the Amish life for all.